Hello ladies and gentlemen. In this video I'm going to explain how to set up farm storage in Minecraft. Several people have asked me about storage for my creeper farm, so I'm going to use that as an example. The teacher in me wanted to do a little more though. I thought it would be a good opportunity to break down the basic concepts of setting up a farm storage to give you a foundation for other projects. I won't be covering every farm storage option or technique in this video. This is just an introduction with examples to get you started. When you think about storage for individual farms, the first thing that comes to mind after a simple chest is probably item filters. I'm going to explain item filters here, but I want to set them in a broader context. There are a lot of ways to make and use item filters. There are also game mechanics and bugs relating to item sorting that can be frustrating if you don't plan around them. Perfectly organized storage where you can find exactly what you want is very satisfying. Item filters are just one part of achieving that goal. Storage for a farm needs to do four things. First, you collect the loot. By that I mean bring it to one place. Then you prepare the loot for sorting. You do some kind of pre-processing or general organization that will make sorting easy, effective, and reliable. The third step is to sort. This is where you build item filters. There's a lot of options, some more or less reliable, some more or less expensive. The most important thing in choosing an item filter is the fit between the particular kind of filter and how you plan to collect, prepare, and then finally how you're going to display the farm output. Which items do you want to keep? How would you like to access them? And what layout is easiest to use and nicest to look at? Storage can be subjective. It's about how you want your stuff to look and feel. That's one reason why many farm tutorials don't cover it in detail. So you should think about your storage display goals and then how the other design choices fit with them. Let's look now at my creeper farm. The storage I made in the world download was designed to meet at least four display goals. Make it easy to count the rates, fit on the platform I was already using, be easy to access, and look presentable. What I came up with first is utilitarian. It's neat and reliable, but nothing fancy. By the time I made the Creeper Palace world download, however, I had gotten tired of the walk through the filter design, so I changed it to this. Here everything is off to the side and lined up more tightly, but it functions the same. I'm going to stick with this version for the demonstration. The collection for this storage is a hybrid of moving the mobs and moving the loot. Mobs in each quadrant of the palace get pushed to the drop shafts and then to the two tridents, and then the loot gets pushed from each quadrant to a single block where it falls and then gets pushed to a hopper. Moving the loot to one spot above the AFK makes it simple to collect the experience orbs. They just fall on you. Then the items can also be easily moved from there to a single hopper. If you want to destroy the XP orbs instead, you can build the storage higher up and have the drops land on a campfire on top of a hopper, like this. To prepare items for sorting, you may think you just need to get them into a hopper. However, it takes more than that to make sorting reliable. I'm going to switch over to a demo world to explain this. So here is a hopper pipe. It's used to move items horizontally above uh, hoppers that are set up as filters. Now, hoppers push and pull items at a set pace, so if you move items past a filter too fast, it will fail. One way that can happen is if you have your first filter directly underneath the hopper that's collecting items, then uh, you can overload this first hopper in the pipe, and the filter underneath will miss half of the items. Another way that misses happen is by the fact that blocks update in random order, so sometimes in a hopper pipe, you can get the item behind to double up with the one in front, and then the filter can only grab one and the other will go past. It's rare, but you can prevent it by slowing the hopper pipe down with a little mechanism I call a limiter. To make a limiter, you're going to uh, build some blocks off of one of the hoppers in the hopper pipe, like this. So first we need a block to support a comparator. The comparator points into another solid block. Then uh, next to that block we have some dust, and then another solid block after the dust that's next to the comparator. So it's going to look like this, and what this will do is slow items down, so when an item gets to this hopper, then it will um, power, the pa comparator will power and activate the block behind, which will turn off the hopper behind until the item that's in this hopper moves on. And so what this does is uh, slows down the hopper pipe to two-thirds of its normal speed, and that ensures that filters will never miss items. That limits the flux capacity of a hopper pipe sorting system to 6,000 items per hour, while it would be 9,000 items per hour without the limiter. The creeper farm doesn't produce anywhere near that, 
So the only thing you'll notice with it in your sorting system there is that your filters never miss. Now for the sorting. I set up this storage to sort gunpowder and string into their own sections and then allow skeleton drops to mix at the end. That fit with my display goal of making it easy to measure rates for the farm. You may want to add filters for the arrows and bones as well, even though the amounts are tiny. Or you may want to burn everything except the gunpowder if that's all you want from the farm. I'll show how to do that after I detail item filters. There are lots of ways to build an item filter. The classic Impulse SV design goes like this. You have a hopper pipe, filter hopper under that, and then a comparator reading from the filter hopper, three redstone dust, a repeater catching the signal from the third dust pointing to a block with a torch on it which powers the block under the comparator and that shuts off this hopper under the filter hopper. When you have this set up the filter hopper will hold four dummy items and one stack of the filter item which will always reserve 41. Now this design is uh, tileable which means you can build two of them next to each other or as many as you want next to each other they will not interfere and it is also overflow proof meaning that if the filter hopper backs up because the storage is full, then the signal coming from that will not interfere with the uh, filters next to it and cause them to break. It is possible to adjust this design to make it only use two redstone dust and therefore reserve only 18 filter items, but this version is not overflow proof because if you um, put, if the storage backs up, and you end up with too many items in one, then the signal will bleed over to the next filter and it'll drain that out just like you're seeing here. So this version would be fine if you were only filtering one item, like if you only wanted to save gunpowder from the creeper farm, but if you're gonna have more than one item filter, then don't build it like this. The world download from my compact creeper farm uses a newer filter design by Mad Hopper, which looks like this. Here uh, there's a block between the filter hopper and the comparator, and comparators can read through a solid block, so that works just fine. And the advantage of this over the Impulse SV version is that it does not require a repeater, so it's a little bit cheaper in, in the block cost and item cost. Now, an interesting thing about this filter is if you have just one of them, then it only will reserve 18 of the filter item, uh, like the short version of the Impulse SV over there. Uh, the reason why that happens is that this redstone dust um, points into the block and um, turns off or turn yeah turns off the redstone torch before this one ever gets lit so this will stay down to 18. Now if you tile these next to each other however the redstone dust redirects into the one next to it and then it requires an additional signal strength to get up here to shut off the block so as soon as you tile them they start reserving 41 and become um, overflow protected. So just an interesting quirk about that one. The Creeper Palace World Download uses a filter design that takes advantage of the target block functionality. So just like Mad Hatter's, Hatter's filter, I have this with a block between the filter hopper and the comparator. Three redstone dust going down, so this block here has to be glass to let the dust go through that corner. And then these dusts get redirected by the target block, so no repeater required, a torch goes into this block here. And I like this because it allows you to build um, the hoppers going and the storage chest going straight down flush like that. But otherwise it's very similar to Mad Hatter's and uh, it filters items and is tileable and overflow protected. So this is a good one to use as well. Now it's also possible to build this one with the uh, comparator right next to the filter hopper like this. And this will make your um, storage jut out a little bit. So if you bring it down, it won't be flush, but uh, it's certainly a viable option. Now, one of the other reasons I like the flush version here with the extra block is that it also allows you to build a limiter right on top of your first filter. So I can put another comparator up here reading the hopper uh, pipe. Put my other blocks like this. And now I've got the limiter um, built right in and that's the way I've done it in the world download as you can see here. Now one other possible tweak you may wish to make 
is that if you have an item that drops a lot more than others, like gunpowder in this farm, and you want to sort them all, then you may want to put the high yield item at one end, probably at the front of your filters, and then use a double chest to split it into two columns, like this. At the end of the hopper pipe, whatever you don't filter can go into a chest, as I've done, which fit my display goal of keeping track of exactly what dropped in the farm so that I could fully understand what was happening and debug any issues. For example, if rotten flesh showed up here, then I would know that I had a spawn spot that was not blocking zombies. But to burn the items, it's as simple as placing a dropper pointing into lava or lava cauldron and clocking the dropper, which is powering it with an alternating on-off pulse. You can do that very simply for the creeper farm by adding another redstone output from the limiter. So what we'll do is put a torch on this side of the solid block, and then a solid block above it, two blocks off to the side going toward the dropper, and redstone dust. Now you just want to make sure you don't put dust directly on top of the dropper, which would hard power it and shut off the hopper that's trying to push items into it. So here's what happens to the items that go past the filters. Well, that's the basics of farm storage broken down into parts. I hope this helps you to enjoy the game.